like literally scared to death. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> First up, what was the mission with this film after Afterlife, especially since we kind of sadly lost Ivan only a few months after Afterlife came out? So, you know, what was kind of the approach that you and Jason, Jason had on this and how to kind of extend this franchise? Well, we um, began the process of writing Afterlife with the idea that we were rekindling the the flame of Ghostbusters. And, and one of the ways that we um, chose to do that was by focusing in on the story of a family and of that family's legacy. Of course, that um, had a real world analog in the story of Jason and his father, a, a sort of passing of the proton wand uh, across the generations. Um, uh, but it also had the, um, the, the, the sort of added benefit of giving us a character story that we could continue to tell the future uh, uh, installments of the Ghostbusters story through. And that was kind of a unique um, a unique opportunity in the world of Ghostbusters. Of course, we've, we've been with these films as cultural institutions for 40 years, but there haven't been that many Ghostbusters films. And so it means now that because we have focused in on this story of a family that in Afterlife was uh, at the beginning of the story, kind of uh, unmoored, looking for a home uh, uh, on their way to Oklahoma, trying to figure out, you know, what this old farmhouse that they were being left with the care of, uh, and inadvertently making a, an extraordinary discovery about their own um, familial legacy. We knew when writing that, that the road led out of Somerville, out of Oklahoma, and towards New York City, and towards the firehouse as the kind of beating heart of Ghostbusters. Um, and we also knew as an opportunity in storytelling that by coming back to this ancestral home, there was for the Spangler family an opportunity to live and work as a family and make their home in this building. Uh, and what that allowed us to do when we started to write this film, Frozen Empire, was that we were able to create a place that was worth fighting for. And not just worth fighting for because it means something to us as fans of Ghostbusters, although that's a good enough reason on its own, but also because characters who we love and characters who care about each other and want to be able to make a life that is better for their children and for, 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 for one another, um, we're going to have a confrontation with a threat that could cost them everything. Um, and yeah. uh, so that allowed us to up the emotional stakes, the personal stakes, and the Ghostbuster stakes all in one fell swoop. You have a character that it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time we really have a ghost as a main character yeah. in Celeste O'Connor as Lucky. And even goes oh, there. You mean, and, you mean uh, Emily Allen Land as uh, oh, Melody? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. the and and you know we have uh, Eva Gozer, Graca, Vigo. These are kind of humans and then interdimensional beings or whatever. But you have full on ghost as a main character now. That, that's exactly right. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a, uh, a a ghost like Melody in these stories. Certainly not one with a story to tell the way that Melody does. Yeah, uh, that was something that um, was an absolute uh, central. Uh, column for us in writing this story. Um, it, it feels like we've spent uh, so much energy telling the human side of the ghost busting equation. It fell right to, uh, with this film, begin to give voice to the other side. Uh, and I love that uh, so far in screening this film, it feels like the, the the fans have been so open because this is a pretty wild swing in these stories to be able to create a character who's a, who's a ghost. I think one of the reasons that um, that the 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 character works uh, is just that Emily's a phenomenal performer and so compelling on screen, but also that the story that Melody um, uh, has to tell and the role that she plays in this story is really deeply connected to the underlying 
narrative. There is tension in this story. There, it's connected to the stakes. We know that the um, the path uh, for her as a character might lead us to a really dangerous place in this film, um, and uh, and that creates a sort of engine that um, that I hope for audiences will create a a level of investment in the in, in in both the emotionality and in the suspense of the thing. So obviously, we have this family element of uh, you know Carrie and Paul and Finn and McKenna, and this you know bringing us in, moving the story forward, expanding the universe, but. You know, what was ultimately a cameo in Afterlife with the assembled team, an extended cameo. Yeah. We now have uh, all of these guys. We have Ernie, Dan, Annie, and Bill back and their thread throughout this story. Was that was was that challenging and even surprising that you could gather all of them together again? Especially, let's face it, I mean, it's it's no secret. Bill, you know, has been notoriously reluctant in the past to return to this franchise. And now he's back and he's doing publicity. He seems to be enjoying himself. So talk a little bit about that. Well, we we wrote audaciously, assuming that everyone was uh, was in uh, for the experience and the script always suggested that because we're coming back to New York City, um, these characters would have to be playing a larger role in this story. And so that definitely was part of the gamble that Jason and I made uh, as we started to envision what this next chapter of the story was going to be. But I, I have to say a couple of things. One is that um, in every instance, I found that these uh, these actors, Bill, Dan, Annie, Ernie, love their characters. They love being Ghostbusters. And uh, for whatever the arc of their uh, of their fame and uh, and success has been over the last 40 years, all of them look back to that first film in 1984 as a defining moment in their life. And all of them love the lifelong relationships they've had with movie lovers who to this day will call Bill Peter Venkman on the street. And I've been with Bill over the years and watched how he always seamlessly turns to engage with uh, with fans and, and has, has been able to reflect that love back. The, the second point I'll say is that Bill specifically as an actor, is the one actor in this whole group that I've had a uh, the, the good fortune to work with before in the past. I directed a small film with Bill called City of Ember way back in 2007. And we had a really good time telling that story together. We, we made a connection on that film that developed into a friendship that we've been able to sort of maintain over these many years since then. And so that was a really happy call for me to make to um, tell Bill that I was going to be directing this next one, uh, in addition to writing it with Jason. Um, and, uh, and Bill really showed up. He showed up to, yeah. to, to be Peter Venkman. And um, I'm really proud of the performances of all four of the OGs in this film. Um, and William Atherton um, as, uh, as, as Walter Peck. Um, because I think that uh, because their roles are expanded, uh, there, is a, there is a risk yeah, that you're not able to sort of channel or capture the, the 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 magic that made their characters so memorable, but they've still got the juice, and um, and I'm really proud that um, that it's not just there as a a reminder of the past; it's there in support of a vital new story, and that that feels like the only authentic way to do it. Yeah, you you further expand the human kind of element in this world through Kamel Nagiani's Nadim and um and Pat Oswald as Dr. Wartsky and um I mean uh, Patton's character in particular I I I love for a couple reasons because you know it's I don't know if it's too much of a spoiler to say where he's operating um No 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 you can say it that's okay. totally fine. So, yeah. He's operating in the library, but the sub library. And I love it because it's not just the site of the first book Ghostbuster case, but it's also now the site of like the real info, what's containing the real uh, deal about this world. Uh, so I guess with that said, the question, well, 
I'm talking to Patton uh, this this week, and I was kind of curious. Any anecdotes for him or questions you think I should ask him about his turn in Ghostbusters? You know what? All you need to do is tell him that uh, your side your side gig is as a paranormal uh, investigator, and it'll open up an entire thread of conversation that you guys can just riff on. Look, Patton is the embodiment of the uh, of 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 the the sort of um, full embracing of the, uh, the the extraordinary power of storytelling of uh, of delving into genre and the supernatural as a way of creating a new uh, universe of engaging with story. I think uh, the, Patton is a unique genius in that he can create almost seemingly out of thin air a uh, an engagement with with really dense narrative uh really deep sort of backstory and mythology that just feels so visceral so living so floating in the air in front of you he we wrote this part for him specifically knowing his superpowers of being able to show such a thrill i mean in the same way that i guess um, that that Dan Aykroyd's Ray Stance would show a thrill of being able to engage with something uh, beyond the norms of you know what would uh, what would normally uh, constitute uh, academic research, um, but um, but with Patton we found an extraordinarily fertile mind, a brilliant comic instinct uh, who was always willing to go there. And and also could always improve a line. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a great thing in the world of ghost busting, uh, right? It's just like it's it's when when he says those words, they just come to life in front of you. Well, and it doesn't. This is not a film that requires you to have um, a an encyclopedic knowledge of the Ghostbusters universe, although. It, for those of us that do, it's certainly rewarding. I'm thinking about Ray's occult bookstore, and as as we see them go into the basement, it seems to be loaded with spiritualist items and spirit photos, and 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 that was making me wonder: d Did you discuss any of this with Dan? Sort of his because, of course, the Harold Ramis, the Dan Aykroyd script that gave us Ghostbusters that that is the magic. But it started with Dan's connection, very personal connection to this spooky world. Did you get a chance to talk to him at all about that? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, just so you know, there's a reason so many of my films have had ghosts in them. My first film, Monster House, was was built on the structure and the idea that a ghost can inhabit an inanimate life form uh, like a house and, and, and bring that to life. Uh, a, a lot of the books in Ray's Occult set were from my personal collection of, uh, of, of paranormal books. And you'll notice some Colin Wilson, some encyclopedias of the of the unknown. All of those come from my personal collection. The uh, the haunted dolls that are interacted with in this film are all dolls that I personally brought to set to be able to uh, to put on screen um, because I too come from <laughs> the same dark corner of the world that you and Dan do, which is that we are, you know, we're, we're open to wonder. We believe in, we believe in the other side. And so I definitely talked to Dan about it. Um, and I, I love, I'm really proud of uh, that moment in the film when Phoebe comes to Dan to ask him almost, you almost get the feeling that's the first time he's ever been asked this question. If he's ever thought about what it would be like to be a ghost. And the, the, that moment of pure childlike wonder in Dan's eyes is one that touches me every time I see the film because it sort of takes you back to the, probably the original instinct that led him to put pen to paper to come up with the first core idea for Ghostbusters. And it, you feel the connection for him um, not just with young Ray Stance, but also with his ancestors who were OG paranormal investigators. And you, you, you remember that under all of the fun and joy and toys and trappings of Ghostbuster films, there is actually a pure concept at the essence of it, which is we do share this world with spirits. <laughs> Those of us who choose to believe it um, uh, accept that as a foundational truth and that there is uh, every once in a while, 
a, uh, a scientific branch that will open up that cabinet of wonders to allow us to see and interact and sometimes trap those those uh, energy forms. And I, I love being able to lean more in that direction in this film. And I think there's room for that if we're lucky enough to make more of these to actually explore that idea even further. Did, have you thought about, uh, we we brought the team back to New York now. Um, we've kind of launched this new team of Ghostbusters as well. We've got another villain. Have you thought about what's next? Is there another villain that, that you and Jason perhaps have in your back pocket? And do you want to expand this out to a bigger world? Uh, the answer to all of that is yes. Uh, Jason and I, um, because it's our nature, we, we, we talk story between us. It's part of the energy of what's always kept us uh, uh, close and has, has built up our, our friendship and our relationship as, as, as creative partners. Um, we have an idea of a really interesting uh, and terrifying uh, villain going forward. Uh, we have ideas that this, these stories can continue to branch out. Um, it's a big world out there, but uh, uh, not necessarily both of those within the same story. Uh, but uh, all of that is, uh, is to say that Ghostbusters is really fertile ground for storytelling. And again, it's had such an, uh, an important hold for so many of us fans over the years, but there have been so few stories told. And that, I don't think that's a reason to say leave well enough alone. I think if you can do it with, with, with love, with authenticity, and with real good stories to tell, then um, as, a, as a fan, I would want to see where these go further. I mean, you, po you bring up the question of almost the ethics of what the Ghostbusters are doing. Um, could there be unethical <laughs> Ghostbusters, bad Ghostbusters? <laughs> never say never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I really appreciate talking to you, Gil. I, I Again, I, I really enjoyed the movie. Thanks. It's such a pleasure. That was a really fun chat. Um, and um, yeah, happy writing.